alarm fatigue and dangerous patients every day worldwide. My name is Dr. Lena Mosch. I am an anesthesiology resident here in the ICU at Charité Universitätsmedizin Berlin. And I'm also in the leadership team of the research group Intelligent Patient Monitoring at our Institute of Medical Informatics. New monitoring technology promises immense potential to enhance patient safety, whether in the hospital or at home. We hope to detect every sign of deterioration right away. The problem humans have to react to the data technology pr uh, produces. And humans have cognitive and physical limitations. Here in the ICU, alarms are meant to save lives. If the patient next door has a cardiac arrest, I would like to be alerted immediately to begin resuscitation. In such situations, every second counts. But what happens when there are too many alarms? Alarm fatigue occurs when healthcare provided, providers are constantly bombarded with alarms. The result, we might miss uh, crucial events or delay our reactions to an alarm. With 85 to 95% of alarms being either false or clinically non-actionable, it's easy to imagine how alarm fatigue happens. And the data that our colleague, Dr. Haley Ruppel at the University of Pennsylvania collected shows that nurses feel even more overwhelmed by alarms outside the ICU. So why are there so many unnecessary alarms? Well, the first reason is quite intuitive. We still rely mainly on threshold-based alarms, but they don't reflect the individual features of a patient, right? So if I have a 21-year-old football player, a heart rate of 45 beats per minute might be totally normal. But in an 85-year-old lady with atrial fibrillation, I would want to call a cardiologist right away. So an alarm threshold of 50 beats per minute is not optimal for both patients. Thresholds are our first problem. And the second one is that we lack reliable metrics to assess alarm fatigue and also alarm burden. And um, as you know, metrics are also important to uh, improve the generalizability of research findings and to consolidate evidence, which then leads us to the third problem, which is that we lack national guidelines, professional guidelines for alarm management. We don't have them in Europe and we also don't have them in the US. We need those guidelines to be able to standardize approaches and provide evidence-based benchmarks for our hospitals. And finally, we need access to alarm data in our hospital databases to be able to generate alarm reports and work with them in regular staff meetings on alarm management. This enables us to find an interprofessional agreement on alarm protocols and really bring them to the patient's bedside. We are making progress together with our international collaborators working on alarm management. In 2023, we've published the Charité Alarm Fatigue Questionnaire. In short, Kafka, like the, the writer, but not related. So Kafka enables us to measure alarm fatigue and to quantify it. Kafka will soon be available um, also in an English validated version by our colleague Haley Ruppel and her team. And here in Berlin, we are actually committed to making the ICU safer by tackling alarm fatigue. Supported by the European Society of Intensive Care Medicine, we are working for smarter alarms using artificial intelligence. We integrate data from vital signs, lab results, and the patient history to make alarms meaningful again. Eventually, only the necessary alarms will sound. The result is that we can take care of the real emergencies again and provide better patient care. So on our journey to combat alarm fatigue, we invite you to join us reach out and make the ICU and other environments safer for our monitored patients.